What's up guys, it's Pradeep here with channel Ace Pants and today we're going to talk about pharmacology. Now this topic was inspired by a conversation that I was having with one of my friends who's currently in PA school. And we're talking about how complicated and overwhelming pharmacology can be, especially during didactic year. So today I'm going to give you guys tips on what to do before class, during class, and after class obviously to effectively study for pharmacology. And I really hope this will help you guys retain and retrieve information effectively, uh, which is extremely compulsory uh, for pharmacology. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button for future videos so you don't miss anything. And I would really appreciate if you do that. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, tip number one, prepare yourself before the lecture. Spend about 10 to 15 minutes going through the given lecture and just quickly read through titles, drug classes, highlighted and bolded material. This will give your brain an idea as to what to expect from the lecture before it even starts. Now this is a very useful trick and it is often used for reading textbooks. It helps readers read quickly because they have an idea of as to what to expect from the book or the particular chapter they're reading before they even start reading. Now if you want to take this to the next level, then I would suggest you highlight the following categories for each drug class. And these categories are mode of action, pharmacokinetics, side effects, contraindications, which can be relative or absolute, make sure you know the difference, and pregnancy categories. Now the reason why we do this is because these are the questions you need answer for every single one of the drugs before you prescribe them as a clinician. You need to know how they work, which is mode of action. You need to know how they react inside the body, which will be how they get absorbed, which organs are involved, which organs are involved in excreting it, how long they stay in the system, and how do we give them, PO, IV, IM, or whatever the route is. You need to know the side effects, contraindications, and whether if it's safe in pregnancy or not. And honestly, you save yourself time doing it beforehand instead of doing it in the lecture. If it's already done for you beforehand, then all you need to do is sit down, focus, and concentrate on every single word that's coming out of your professor. I guarantee you guys, if you guys do this, you will have about 10 to 30% of the lecture down right from the start, before you even start studying. Now, out of all of these categories, I will say pregnancy category is probably the hardest to memorize. Now, there are a few ways you can tackle this. One is by knowing the pregnancy category of the drug class and not the individual medications in that drug class. And the second trick is that focus on drugs that are dangerous in pregnancy. For example, pregnancy category D. Any drug that is pregnancy category D, I would memorize it because this will help you eliminate choices when you ask questions regarding this category. So these are two things that I personally used in PA school and they were quite effective for me because uh, once you start practicing, you're gonna have a lot of resources on your hand that you can use, but for test purposes, uh, these are two things that I use to tackle uh, pregnancy category. All right, moving on to tip number two. Record the lectures if the professors allow you. Guys, this is extremely helpful. You can listen to these lectures while you're driving, while you're working out, or really doing anything that's kind of mindless and you know not associated with studying. Another thing is, if you miss something in your lecture, you can always go back to the recording and just listen to it and you know fill out your notes if need be. And I would suggest increasing the speed by 25, 50, or even doubling it uh, if you have listened to the lecture already. Uh, and this will decrease the amount of time you're gonna spend listening to the lecture. Your brain has already heard it once and it will make connections much faster the second time around. So you can definitely increase the speed and you'll be just as productive. And guys, there have been so many times when I picked up on things on my second or third listen that I never did the first time. So I would definitely use this tip to the max. Honestly, I have even used this while I was showering. Yes. That's how desperate I have been in PA school. Now, before we move on to tip number three, I just want to go over the two components of memorization, and they are encoding and retrieval. Encoding is formation of new memories, whereas retrieval is access to those memories. Majority of the time, we focus so much on encoding that we forget about retrieval of the information, which is very important for exams. So I'm going to show you ways that help you with both of these things. Now, let's move on to tip number three. Now we have already organized the lecture before it even started. So we're already ahead of the curve. Now what you're gonna do is, based on your own comfort level or how big the lecture is, you're gonna split it it's into either two, three, or four sections. You're gonna memorize the first section first, and when you do this, you're gonna be completely isolated, no distractions, put your phone away, turn off your notifications, turn off your email, 
and do this part by yourself. Because remember, pharmacology and anatomy are two things that are very heavily dependent on road memory. So in these cases, I actually endorse using mnemonics or really any method you can possibly find to memorize these things. And as you're memorizing, make sure you're making a review on the side. Now this review can be done in the form of index cards, PowerPoints, chart, if you want to write it out, whatever you like. Just make something that you can use later to test yourself. So now, once you have gotten comfortable enough with the material, start testing yourself. After you're satisfied with your results, then move on to the second section. Now, once you're done memorizing the second section and you're about to test yourself, test yourself on the first section, then the second. And repeat this process with the rest of the sections. This way you can encode new memories and start practicing how to retrieve them. Now I just want to clarify something before we move on, and that is that I'm not against group work or you know group studies. Uh, I'm all for it. Uh, if anything, I encourage it because you know it's best to use each other, uh, especially during PA school since we're so limited on time and resources. But for memorizing purposes, I really think you should do it in an isolated manner because it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. To fully concentrate on something and if you're being bothered by someone if you're getting texted here and there uh, and you know every half an hour or every hour you're taking breaks then it breaks your concentration and then you have to restart the whole process and it takes you 10 to 15 minutes to get into the groove again and now as you keep on doing this over and over that time session is gonna increase it's gonna take you longer than 15 minutes to get into the rhythm so that's why I believe initially, you know, just isolate yourself and study for at least three to four hours uh, without any interruptions. Tip number four. With this tip, we're going to improve our retrieval skills even more. And we're going to do this with the Littner system. So the Littner system is testing yourself in intervals. And with each interval, the time should increase. This will help you retain and access information more efficiently. Now, the intervals are going to vary depending on when your exam is. But studies have shown the longer the interval period, the better you will have access to that information. So I would highly suggest start studying these packets as soon as you get them. I understand we have a lot of things going on during PA school. There are a lot of exams. So even if you can't get through the full package, maybe do half of it or do one fourth or do some of it. So at least you got some head start and you're not overwhelming yourself last minute. All right, tip number five. Have some sort of physical activity in your life that will help you break a sweat. And it doesn't have to be long. It can be anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And you can do this every day or every other day or whatever you think is appropriate for you. Now the reason why I point this out is because there was a study done by Harvard Medical School in which participants walked briskly for about an hour twice a week for six months. And this led to an increase in the size of the hippocampus which is responsible for verbal memory and learning. Not only that, it's healthy for you. You won't be sluggish, there'll be increased flow to your brain, oxytocin will release, all these things will have a positive impact on your study. So that's why I highly recommend that you have some sort of physical activity in your daily life, even during PA school. Now, if you have stuck with me throughout this video, then I got a bonus tip for you on how to improve your memorizing ability. So now I'm sure you guys remember that in middle school and high school, uh, we were required to memorize poems, speeches, uh, or if you were in Catholic school, you might be you know, uh, required to memorize certain passages from the Bible. Now there was a reason why they did this. It was to increase working memory. These type of exercises have shown that they increase working memory. Another thing studies have shown is that working memory is strongly correlated with IQ and problem solving ability. Now I wouldn't recommend doing these exercises during PA school because we're so busy, but if you're in the pre-PA phase uh, or if you're in your break and you want to work on yourself, this might be one thing to do uh, which is less stressful and doesn't directly deal with studying. Alright guys, that marks the end of the video. These were just some quick tips to help you tackle pharmacology and I'm hopeful that they will be able to help you out. And please guys, don't get discouraged by pharmacology. I know it's extremely hard in didactic year, but it gets easier as you go on. It's going to get easier in clinicals and it's going to be even easier when you start practicing. When you're practicing, you're going to be dealing with only 20 to 30 drugs on a day-to-day basis and you're going to know them on the back of your head, okay? It's not going to be hard. Just get through didactic year, push through it, and after that, it gets easier. The more you see these drugs, the better it will help you remember them, all right? So, yeah, 
thank you so much for watching the video i really appreciate it and if you got any value out of it please like subscribe and hit the bell button for future videos and i'll take your leave now and i'll see you guys next week with more medical content thank you guys thank you everyone